Welcome back to the TLC Perfect Pond channel. Today we're giving the fish a break and we're doing a little water quality management for this pond here behind us. We're going to be doing some liming in this pond here. We're going to be talking to you about the importance of liming, why a pond needs lime and the benefits of using lime and we're going to show you how we do it. So this particular pond here is around 20 acres or so maybe a little less maybe a little bit more we'll just say 20 acres is a fair assumption and this is a recently built pond i think it was dug just a few years ago it has been stocked by the owner so we're not doing any fish or population management on this pond currently we're just doing the liming today we can see here that the owner has installed a couple of these texas hunter feeders which we highly recommend for all of our clients there's one here and there's one on the far side of the pond over there and these things really help maintain the health of your sunfish populations and if the sunfish are fat and healthy the bass will likely be fat and healthy as well and if you've just stocked a pond which i believe this one was stocked not too long ago these things really help to get your fish up to size in a hurry now as opposed to some of the ponds we manage this particular pond is not located near any agricultural sources there's no farmland nearby there's also no livestock near the pond so if we scan around here it's mostly just river bottom and swamp a lot of really sandy soils as you can see there so we're not getting any agricultural runoff to supplement the fertility in this pond now on a previous video which we'll put a link to up here somewhere we talked about the importance of pond fertility pond fertility plays kind of two key roles in pond management the first one would be more food chain related so if a pond is fertile the water has plenty of nutrients in it that's going to boost the phytoplankton or the photosynthetic plankton populations and those kind of form the base of the pond food chain so if the phytoplankton populations are healthy and abundant, the bluegill or the sunfish have plenty to eat, they're nice and healthy, and then the top predators, which eat the bluegill, the bass, are nice and healthy as well because they've got plenty to eat. So if you don't have healthy plankton populations, the effects of that can cascade all the way up the food chain to the top predators or the largemouth bass. So it's really important to establish those healthy plankton populations and how we do that is nutrients in the water. Now with those agricultural ponds, we're getting a lot of runoff in the water from livestock or you know farmland fertilization. In a pond like this, we're not getting a lot of fertilizer runoff or nutrient runoff, so oftentimes we have to supplement those nutrients. Now another reason the plankton population are so important has to do with vegetation management. So ponds that don't have a lot of plankton on the surface there tend to get a lot of subsurface vegetation in the pond that can make a pond tough to fish that can also make it tough to boat in as well now if we have healthy plankton populations they kind of form a film on the surface of the water and you can tell when a pond has this because the color of the water will be kind of green and so what that does is it shades out any aquatic vegetation in the water below that tries to grow so the plankton really help to reduce any vegetation problems of course you can spray and treat vegetation but improving the plankton populations is a more kind of biological and sustainable way to manage the vegetation in your pond so we can see here the color of this water is kind of brown it doesn't have that green film on it like we would see in a fertile pond that was near some type of agricultural source. So having fertile pond water, having a lot of nutrients in the water is gonna boost those phytoplankton populations. It's gonna stimulate the food chain all the way to the top, and it's gonna help with a lot of your subsurface vegetation. So how do we get those nutrients in the water if they're not coming from a lot of runoff? Well, one way to do that is by liming the pond. We can also fertilize the pond and add the nutrients in here yourself. But a lot of times, liming will take care of that for us. So there are lots of benefits to liming a pond, but there's two main benefits that we consider as far as our pond management goes. One of those being that it improves pond fertility. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And the second big one is that it prevents drastic 
pH swings in the pond water, especially during the summer months. So in the summer months, when the days are long and the light intensity is greater, you're gonna have a lot more photosynthetic activity from these phytoplankton or photosynthetic plankton. And during the day when the sun is out, that's when the plankton are photosynthesizing. And that whole process involves them uptaking CO2 from the water there and then producing the products of photosynthesis. So the plankton are consuming a lot of CO2 or carbon dioxide from the water during the day and the removal of that carbon dioxide is going to raise the pH of the water. Now conversely, once the sun goes down at nighttime, those plankton are respiring. They're not photosynthesizing. And when they're respiring, they're releasing CO2 or carbon dioxide into the water. And when you add CO2 to water, that's going to lower the pH. So every single pond experiences these pH swings on a daily basis and they're more severe during the summer months because the sunlight is intense. But basically during the day, CO2 is being consumed, the pH goes up, at nighttime, CO2 is being released, and the pH goes down. Now what can happen in some ponds, if that pH swing from day to night is really, really drastic, it can have an effect on the fish populations in the pond and sometimes can cause fish kills. So what we wanna do with liming is buffer that pH and make sure those pH swings aren't as drastic and that's gonna improve the overall health of the fish in this pond. And it's not gonna stress the fish out as much and we'll keep that pH from varying so much from day to night. So adding lime to a pond like we're doing today is going to improve the overall water quality. It's going to make sure the pH is right for the fish in the pond. It's also going to prevent those drastic pH swings from night and day like we talked about. It's going to improve the alkalinity, the hardness of the water. Just make the water quality better for the fish there. And as I mentioned earlier, liming can also improve the fertility of a pond. And so, although this pond is not getting any agricultural runoff, there are nutrients in this soil here. Even if it's fairly poor soil, there are nutrients bound to that soil in the bottom of the pond. And what liming does is it helps kind of release some of those nutrients from the soil into the water so then those plankton populations can thrive on those nutrients and we can get all those good effects of having an abundant plankton population. So just to recap here before we go over there and I show you how our guys actually add lime to a pond. Pond fertility is very important. We want to have abundant phytoplankton populations. We can have that from agricultural runoff or we can add lime to a pond. If it doesn't have a lot of ag runoff, the lime is gonna release nutrients from the soil. It's also gonna buffer the pH and improve the overall water quality. So the way we do this is we have this agricultural lime here, brought in and dumped alongside the pond in piles. This is pretty fine stuff and it dissolves pretty easily once we wet it and put it in the pond. So we just get this from a nearby source get it dumped here and then we can apply it to the pond and then we've got Larry here which is our heavy equipment operator and uh, he loads up the barge which is coming around to get another load so we've got a boat pushing a little pontoon boat barge and we put the line on top of the barge and then we use the boat to push it and dissolve it as evenly in the water as we can as you can see there the barge has a flat platform on it we put the lime and then we got a pump on top of it it's pulling water from the pond and allows us to rinse it off or wash it off the platform and dissolve it into the pond now our general recommendation and what we usually do is two tons of lime per acre of the pond but this particular pond owner wanted three tons per acre and so that's what we're doing maybe because the pond is new maybe because the fertility isn't where he wants it to be so normally two but in this case three tons per acre. So the reason we do it the way we do it is because we want an even dispersion of lime across the entire pond. We want to dissolve it into the water so it can have a faster effect on improving the fertility and the water quality in the pond. You just don't want to dump this stuff along the bank here. You want to dissolve it into the pond as evenly as possible. So let's hop on the boat with these guys and give you a little closer look as to how it's done. time. 
so that's how we do it now a job like this a bigger pond 20 acres or so it'll take us about two days to get all this lime dissolved in the water a smaller pond we can usually handle that in a day and it's better to go ahead and apply the lime during the cooler months this pond will probably need to be fertilized once it warms up in the spring and early summer and the application of lime now will help it respond a lot better to that fertilization that happens a few months from now so liming is an important part of the pond management equation for older ponds but especially for newer ponds like this where you're trying to get the fertility right you've got fish that have just been stocked in there you want to establish those plankton populations so you can have those effects all the way up to the food chain and make sure the water quality is right for the fish in the pond so hopefully you enjoyed seeing the whole pond liming process why it's important why it's necessary and if you're in the south georgia or north florida area and think your pond could benefit from a water quality analysis or maybe the addition of lime you can give us a call send us a message if you're watching on youtube we'll put a link below to our contact us page on our website go fill that out we'll get back with you and schedule a consultation as always if you enjoyed the video make sure to give us a big thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and we'll see you next time right here on the TLC Perfect Pond channel.